So I just wrapped up teaching at the Out of Oregon Landscape Photography Conference up in uh, Newport, and what an absolute honor that was to not only get to meet a lot of those photographers, but to, to get to know them and really get to work with them. It was just a, an absolute pleasure. I'm gonna be in Oregon for, I believe, three or four more days, so I decided to drive down the coast towards California and just kind of slowly wake my, make my way back up to Portland where I'm flying out uh, in a few days. So uh, I'm not 100% sure what I'm looking for here, but it's an absolute gorgeous scene. There's these crazy huge sea stacks with trees growing out the top and massive crashing waves. Only problem is, is well, one, it's starting to rain again, and two, there's just absolutely no light. The clouds are really socked in, which seems to be a common trend here on the Oregon coast. But nevertheless, I'm going to wander around and just see what I can come up with. I just found this incredible overlook. I didn't film any kind of talking video because it was just a little bit too sketchy. It was just, you got to go over all these gnarly roots to get down to this kind of very, very tiny and very slippery and muddy little landing where you can photograph this amazing scene. There are these incredible sea stacks, both to your left and your right leading out to the ocean. And the ocean is just ripping right now. Very, very, very cool spot. All right, so I decided to come down again. The uh, clouds started to finally break up a little bit, revealing a little bit of blue. Still see the moon a touch too. And I'm just taking different exposures, trying to time the waves to where they're washing down off of the, uh, the black rock, the sea stacks, kind of get those nice kind of white, I guess, striations of water. I'm using different exposure or different uh, shutter speeds. This is really experimenting it, just trying to get the right amount of texture and right amount of motion in those shots. I'm also bracketing the images as well. Not 100% sure if I even need to do it, but I'm just gonna do it just to be safe. And there's my composition right now. I know it's really hard to see and it's probably very hard to hear. These waves are super loud. I'm actually gonna turn this off of bracketing mode for a second and just try and time some of these massive waves coming in. What a location. That was super intense, super cool though. The conditions turned out okay, nothing fantastic. There wasn't a, a ton of light. There was a little bit of color. There was a little bit of fogs to create a little bit of atmosphere and separation. So that's definitely a good thing. Could have been a lot worse, but there's still some pockets of fog remaining in this kind of forest behind me or forest in front of me. And I'm just gonna kind of wander around, see if I can find an area of fog. Maybe the, a little bit of light illuminating the fog, backlighting some of this hanging moss from some of these old growth trees. It's a very, very cool woodland area, so I'm just gonna kinda wander around and just see if there's anything else we can find. This is exactly the kind of tree I was just looking for, but unfortunately, there's no light behind the tree because that's what you really need to show off all the details in the moss up there. And there's really no fog because you really need the fog to, so to really separate the tree from everything else in the background, just to kind of clean up the image a little bit, just so it's not so chaotic. And unfortunately, we're missing two of those elements. So I'm gonna keep, uh, keep searching. I did run through a couple pockets of fog here and there, but it's starting to get a little bit more uh, hit and miss now that the, uh, the sun is starting to come up. I think a lot of it is, uh, I think a lot of it is honestly a sea spray or mist as opposed to fog. And a lot of that, I guess, is just kind of burning off with the rising sun. So we will see. Look at this one right here. Let me zoom in some. This whole entire tree is covered by moss. And there is a little bit of light hitting it. You can see some. I think this might be an option. I decided to skip that tree. There was too many like highlights popping everywhere behind the tree because it was overlooking the, uh, the ocean. And I mean, it, it wasn't too bright. I mean, I could properly expose the image, but all those kind of highlights, I think, would just serve as a big distraction whenever you were just looking at the tree. I think your eye would just kind of keep popping back and forth between all those little bright spots. So I found some interesting trees, but there just wasn't uh, you know, the other supporting elements. There was no fog or mist or really even sea spray around these interesting trees. And there was no light illuminating any portion of them. So there was no way to kind of create that three-dimensional look or create structure for the tree itself. So I went ahead and packed up. And I think tonight or here in a couple hours, I'm gonna head north to uh, Bandon, Oregon, which I believe is about an hour and a half. And I've been told that there is just a, a, an amazing sea stacks right on the, the, uh, the beach that uh, you can photograph. And the sunset tonight is uh, 
maybe 50 50 there's a chance it could be okay there's a, a good chance it could be a complete washout as well but uh, i'm going to head that way here shortly to find out so i made it to bandon it's about maybe 5 30 high tide is about two and a half hours ago but it's still coming in you know every once in a while a set comes in much farther than the, the rest of them but uh, the the composition that i'm looking for is maybe about 100 yards out into the ocean and i'm just kind of waiting for the the tide to, re to recede just a little bit sunsets at about 6 30 so i still got about an hour left and i'm hoping that the tide kind of pulls back enough in order for me to get close enough to the sea stack to make it work So between taking an exposure and running back to the beach and running back out taking another exposure and back and forth that game i think i did get a good shot the light only lasted i don't know maybe 10 minutes i tried to record a little bit of video but it was really dicey when the tide came in i had just enough time to hit the shutter button rip up my tripod and run back about 50 feet before uh you know the, the incoming tide completely succumbs my camera and myself so uh, but either way i think i got maybe two or three images that i'm pretty happy with that had the, uh, the perfect uh, shutter speed, the right amount of flow coming into the camera or going away from the camera and the good light. So we won't know until we get it on the computer. So I got a tip from a friend about a waterfall that should have a ton of fall color. That's about, I believe two and a half hours northeast of Bandon. And I'm at the trailhead right now. I'm gonna be meeting him here shortly, but based off of what I'm seeing, it looks pretty good. There's a, there's a ton of color all over the place. So I made it to Silver Falls and this place is absolutely ridiculous. The fall color is off the charts. It's the type of brilliant yellows that are so brilliant that when you get the images in post, you're gonna have to desaturate them just to make it look realistic. And literally everything is covered in moss and it's just stringy and it's hanging down and blowing in the wind. This is absolute photographic paradise here. <laughs> So now that you've had about, what, 15, 20 minutes to explore, what's your kind of a initial reaction to this well, it, place? It is, like you just said, it's sensory overload. And I've been here before, and it was this time of year, almost to the day, about five, six years ago, but this is far more aflame than it was back then. Like, these yellows are popping. It's almost painful to look at. Yeah, that's what I was mentioning earlier. These are the type of colors when you get it in post, you have to desaturate it because it doesn't even look real. Yeah, yeah, people yeah. say, oh, you crank the saturation, turn it down. But like this is, these images are coming out of the camera like scorching, yeah, which is fantastic. And the conditions are absolutely perfect right now. Nice and overcast, which is perfect for shooting any kind of fall color or waterfalls or anything like that. And the best part is you can just wander around for hours. You're not chasing conditions or light. These clouds are socked in all day. So we've got a solid like four hours to is just that... geek out on autumn color. Oh, well, we're gonna geek out. <laughs> but I mean, for me, like I, the last time I was here, I was all about the big waterfalls. But now that we're kind of doing these, these back trails, I'm spotting all of these colors and branches in the canopy that will make a really nice kind of abstract yeah, Still. like the intimate scenes, the yeah. intimate detail shots. And I think, you know, if you were if you were into print sales, something like that's probably going to sell more because it's not tied to a specific location. You could think, oh, this is anywhere. This could be anywhere. Yeah. You know, whereas a big picture of a, a very distinctive waterfall is, you is, know, exactly where you know it exactly is. Exactly yeah. where it is, kind of like a GPS print. So that something like just this canopy might be a bit more universally accepted. So that's that's kind of like my secondary little little project for today. Give myself a little homework project. Yeah, I like it. It makes sense. Let's see what we can find. So 
So I put the Sony 100 to 400 on, just zoomed all the way into the base of the falls to try and get more simplistic, kind of a minimalistic style of image where the water is just splashing across the bottom or the, uh, the pool of water. A little bit of a longer exposure, maybe one second or maybe a full second, just trying to different shutter speeds. I don't want to actually freeze the water, but I don't want it to be completely milky smooth to where it loses all of its texture. I'm using a 10 second timer, eh, five or 10 second timer, just whenever you're using a longer lens, you always want to put a uh, something more than a two second timer because the longer the lens, the more shake that's going to take a little bit more time to stabilize that before you actually take your exposure. But I'm going to rattle off a couple here and just figure out exactly what shutter speed works the best. So this is a closer look at the composition right here. I'm just changing the, uh, the aperture a little bit and changing the shutter speed. I'm just kind of playing around with different uh, shutter speeds on this because I don't, I took a couple that were a much longer exposure. I think uh, I took one as long as one second and that's a, I like that shot as well, but I'm kind of envisioning something with a little bit faster shutter speed like that right there. But I really want it even faster than that. So I'm gonna go to 1 40th of a second and then really open up the aperture here to something about that. Let me just refocus this real quick. Right there, looks good. Hit the shutter, 10 second exposure, or sorry, 10 second uh, timer. Let's see exactly what that's gonna come up with. Hopefully it freezes it a little bit, but not. I don't wanna be completely frozen. So I like that a little bit. I like how the, how the actual water spray across the bottom is kind of billowing out like that. I really like that. But now the wind is picking up and you can see how it kind of blew some of the waterfall over right there which I don't want. So I'm gonna take a couple more exposures with that, with those settings right there. So I found another composition that I really like. This one's got these kind of roots that are covered with moss coming in the bottom right-hand corner of my frame. And then I got the waterfall lined up in the middle. There's a tree here that you can't see on the left side that's kind of balancing the left side. And then there's two rocks kind of leading into the, the mid-ground area. And then you have all these autumn leaves in the foreground here. And I'm having a focus stack it, just a, an image for the, the foreground, the midground, and the background, which I'll combine in Photoshop later. But I'll show you exactly what the composition is now. So this kind of gives you an idea what the composition looks like. I know it's kind of hard to see, but this gives you a general idea. But I really like the uh, all the uh, the fall colors in the foreground here. Then there's, there's these roots in the bottom right-hand corner of the frame. And then you got these rocks in the midground. And then, of course, there's that tree on the left side. And then the waterfall in the dead center. Oh, best day of my life ever. It doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> you know, Mark, it's often said, you've probably heard this before, that it's not the destination, it's the journey. And we can see a perfect example of this in this gorgeous river bend. So, betwixt two waterfalls, we were just at the north end, now we're going down to the south end. Actually, I might have that wrong. South end, north end. Between two waterfalls, we see this spectacular river bend scene unfold before our very eyes. And I think this might be my juiciest shot of the day. So let me show you this shot. I don't know if you can see this. I'll just pull this out here. If I just overexpose it there, you've got this lovely bend in the river. Look at all this color here. And then you've got these trees that arch in from either side. Oh, oh it's just, this is the kind of shot I'm always looking for. It's that bonus shot. It's not what you came here for, but it might end up being the best shot of the day. So we just got to the actual lower falls, as you can see behind me. And I think I like this one a little bit better than the first one because the actual waterfalls falls on like a, a bunch of rocks at the bottom so you get a little bit more of an interesting uh, water falling as opposed to the very first waterfall which is kind of clean into a uh, body of water plus this one is completely surrounded by uh, autumn trees which looks absolutely spectacular so i only got about maybe 30 minutes left of usable light to shoot anything so i'm going to go ahead and try and find at least one more composition of this waterfall. Pack things up, say bye to Gavin, and head up to Portland. I'm gonna check into my hotel room and we'll announce the, uh, the winner of the Nissi V6 filter system. So I think that's probably about it. There's really not a whole lot of light left, maybe, maybe 20, 30 minutes at the most. Yeah, so um, either way, I do appreciate the invite. This place is absolutely it's something, something else. It really is. How many shots do you think you got? I think I, there was really about four compositions, and I think there was maybe two of them that I'm pretty excited about. Three of them might work. What yeah. about you? The exact same. Maybe four comps, two I know are good, 
Maybe three if yeah. I'm lucky. If I could come away with one, yeah, that'd be huge. That, that's it. Yeah, I mean, if that. I if I drive 12 hours, pay for a hotel, a full tank of gas, several very overpriced meals, right? Suffer extreme discomfort, potentially even bed bugs, and I get oh, one good shot. Absolute 100% bed bugs. Then <laughs> that's a result. Yeah, absolutely. I did. How was your uh, flea pit hotel last night? It was uh, exactly the same as it was the previous night. It wasn't an ounce cleaner and not an ounce dirtier. So it's <laughs> very consistent. <laughs> so uh, there's a distinct, actually, you know, the, the, the hotel we were at before was $74 US dollars. So that's like a million Canadian. Right. And it was an absolute dive. It was disgusting. The second night, which was last night, I paid $6 more. It was a whole, whole world of It was like staying at the Marriott. <laughs> and I couldn't understand it because it was in a busy city, Eugene. It was right. a Saturday night. Six dollars gets you a hell of a lot more than seven. So that's the that's the cutoff point. Eighty dollars. Eighty dollars. All right. I'm going to keep that in mind next yeah. time. That's your free <laughs> pro tip right, right. there. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Well, let's go ahead and pack up and get out of here. Yeah, let's get All out right. of here. What a busy 10 days it's been out here on the Oregon coast, but I have had an absolute blast. It has been so much fun. I've really enjoyed every single moment of it. But before I end this week's video, I do wanna make sure I announce the winner of the drawing. So in the video two weeks ago, all about long exposure photography, there was over 1,200 comments, which ultimately meant over 1,200 entries into winning the Nissi V6 filter system. So the winner by random drawing is Mr. Glenn King. So congratulations, Glenn. Get in touch with me on Instagram. Just send me over a direct message with all your contact information, and I'll make sure I make arrangements to have Nissi send that filter system out to you. So I really hope you enjoyed this week's video. I know I had a really good time making it and documenting my, uh, my trip out here to the West Coast. If uh, you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments section below, and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And if you enjoyed this week's video, if you could give it that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video, and I'll see you next week. Bye.